Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the gold spot over the silver spot. You can see that um, we've got kind of a divergence happening now, right there. Uh, is it the most dramatic that we've had? No, you can see that uh, crash in silver that precipitated uh, the drop in gold was a uh, more dramatic divergence there. Um, does it portend something? Is Are we looking at the big one? That's going to be the question for the night. Are we looking at the big one? Because it's starting to look at, it's starting to look like it is the big one. And uh, I'm going to be looking at the TED spread here um, and to try to determine if this, this really is the big one. So here's a little bit further out uh, of the daily chart. You can see that uh, they on the daily chart they can trade um, away from each other but they usually end up syncing up after a while probably the biggest long-term divergence is this long bottom here where silver was significantly below gold uh, and then uh, when we get out to the weekly we're going to start to see that really serious divergence that we've had for quite some time where silver has lost a significant amount compared to what gold has lost relative to the highs that were made so you can see here on this one that gold is kind of putting in a, a bottoming pattern. We probably want to pull up the relative MACDs and see. Uh, so if we pull up the MACD, I think uh, gold is the first symbol here. So this, this will be the gold MACD that we see. Yeah, so the gold MACD is near crossing over. Uh, but if we pull up the silver MACD... You can see it's just kind of sideways, even rolling over down. So that's the big difference. Now, what's the logic in it? Well, of course, we know what the logic is. The logic is that uh, if the economy is going to collapse and we're going to go into some deflationary event, then a lot of wealth is going to be fleeing towards gold uh, for safety reasons. And uh, But the demand for silver, which is an industrial metal, uh, is going to collapse because industry will collapse. That's that's the version that everybody gives. Of course, it's not. It doesn't happen in reality. We saw it in 2008. The gold turned around. Silver turned around too. But uh, silver did definitely take it on the chin a lot harder than gold did in 2008. Eventually, they turn around, and I think there's enough people buying silver now as a monetary metal. They're buying it as safety. I think that's what accounts for the large numbers of investors we've seen with a record silver eagle demand. And then, of course, we know how tiny the silver market is. It would it it would take a change in sentiment of one percent of the population, or it would take you know just such a tiny fraction to just swing that thing dramatically the other way. So I think that silver is going to follow gold up, but gold will probably go there first. So looking at a few other things here, uh, we we have a continuing uh, devaluation of the Chinese yuan. Uh, they're they're taking it in. Uh, fairly dramatic direction now. Uh, this is the daily chart. And you can see, no, that's the weekly, I'm sorry. So that's what we did in the week there, pretty big move. Uh, on the day, we're, we're kind of rallying there. Of course, the Chinese had halted their stock market. Um, then apparently, that now they decide to let it go. It, it, the news is coming so fast and furious. Uh, but their, their stock market was absolutely cratering. And the U.S. stock market had a really, really bad opening. It didn't close nearly as bad, but it was a, a bad day. You can see it didn't close on the lows, but we've got a big drop there. You, you can see it sliced through 17,000 like a knife through butter and uh, actually went below 16.5. So you can see that it definitely has that rolling over look to it. Uh, this is going to be one that is going to kind of look like this is the big one here. Um, the dead cat bounce there was just that. Uh, unless it turns around really quick, then it looks like we're going to be doing one of these and one of these. So let me show you the TED spread and why I think that uh, we may be looking at one of the big ones coming up here. Um, first, I want to explain this for those of you who aren't familiar with it. It's something that uh, when I was in futures and options, it's something that people kept uh, kept a close eye on because it's a very good indicator. So basically the TED spread is a spread, uh, it's the difference between interest rates on interbank loans and on short-term U.S. government debt. 
And TED is an acronym formed from T-bill and ED, or Euro dollar, futures contract. The TED, initially, the TED spread was the difference between the interest rates for three-month U.S. Treasury contracts and three-month Euro dollar contracts, as represented by the London uh, Interbank Offered Rate, the LIBOR. However, since the Chicago Mercantile Exchange dropped T-bill futures after the 1987 crash, the TED spread is now calculated as the difference between the three-month LIBOR and the three-month T-bill interest rate. So just to explain that so that it makes sense, um, basically uh, one is the interest rate set by the Treasury and they can set the interest rate wherever they want because they can issue as many dollars as they want to pay those off. They can, they can fix those uh, rates. Whereas the LIBOR rate is going to be a rate for money that's held overseas. So it's going to be dollars that are held in Europe primarily and uh, what interest is being asked for those. Now they, those banks that have those interbank loans, they can't, uh, well they, they can be bailed out, but they're not necessarily uh, guaranteed to be bailed out. So they have a higher interest rate. So that's how the indicator works. Uh, this is a, an explanation of what that means. The TED spread is an indicator of perceived credit risk in the general economy. Since T-bills are considered risk-free, while LIBOR reflects the credit risk of lending to commercial banks, an increase in the TED spread is a sign that lenders believe the risk of default on interbank loans, also known as counterparty risk, is increasing. Interbank lenders therefore demand a higher rate of interest or accept lower returns on safe investments such as T-bills. When the risk of bank defaults is considered to be decreasing, the TED spread decreases. So, and then here's some history of the highs. The long-term average of the TED spread has been about 30 basis points. Uh, during 2007, it ballooned to 150 to 200 basis points, and uh, that was during the last financial crisis. Also, we have Black Monday. So let's take a look at the long-term chart. Um, this is uh, St. Louis Federal Reserve, the FRED page, which is just a fantastic site for all kinds of charts. And you can see this is the long-term chart of the TED. So the big spikes that we have here are going to be the 1987 stock market crash. You can see that. And then you can see the, dot com, the beginning of the dot-com bubble and then that dot downturn. Uh, but they started as soon as the uh, NASDAQ you know, really started turning down, the Fed ratcheted down the interest rates really quickly to get that under control. So they had a, a, a real rapid lowering uh, during that instance. Same thing here, even more dramatic, you can see huge spike during the financial crisis of, of the TED spread, all the way up to three. So that's a big, uh, that's a big difference. That's 3%. That's going to be a difference between the um, interest rate paid on the short-term treasuries, the three-month three, three month T-bills and, and the euro dollar. So you can see here's where we are now. Uh, we had a little spike there around 2011, but now we're coming back into a spike. We spiked above five and uh, we're now at 4.5. So the big question is going to be going forward, what's going to happen to the TED spread? Now, if we go over to Chrome here, I've got a site that's very good. This is uh, ycharts.com and uh, they show you right here Here's how you figure it. It's real simple. It's uh, the TED spread. Is, here's the formula. The three-month LIBOR uh, minus the three-month T-bill rate. So you can see right here on the TED. Now, one thing I wanted to point out that's kind of interesting is the latest period for it is December 31st. They haven't reported it yet this year, which is really strange because uh, you can see that it reports daily except for the weekends so and holidays but we haven't had a report of the TED spread since December 31st. And you can see that it was starting to blow out there. It was, you know, 45 basis points. So you can see here, here's the three month LIBOR. And it turns out we haven't had a report of LIBOR since December 31st. You can see it hit that high 0.61 and we haven't got a report. Um, so then, then you've got the three month treasury bill here and you can see there's the spike on the chart, but it's still all the way down at 0.2. So with the uh, 
LIBOR spiking up to 0 0.6 something and 0.2, you can see that's how we end up with that 0 0.45, 0 0.4 to 0.45 on the TED spread. So again, this is an indicator of, here's the close up on it, of a lack of confidence in the ability. Uh, basically, uh, this is a, a measure of counterparty risk and the fear of counterparty risk. The higher this goes, the more fear there is of counterparty risk. So if we're going to go by this indicator, I would say this is a pretty good indicator that's telling us that we uh, very well may be approaching the big one here. Because you can see here this recent spike where they turned it around in 2011, we're not very far from that. And they haven't really reported it in the last few days, so I, I want to see what it is when they finally do report it. But a spike up above five and say a spike to seven or higher, that's pretty much going to put us on this path here, which means we are starting down the road of the next financial crisis. And I think personally this one's going to be the blockbuster, the big one. This is going to be the biggest one of all. So we're going to watch the stock market very carefully. We're also expecting silver to begin to follow gold uh, once people begin to panic out of risky assets. We're also seeing Bitcoin starting to take off now. So a lot of indicators that the big one is right around the corner. And we'll talk to you next time.